I've made a commander deck that is a completely immersive Lord of the Rings experience that combines all the forces of good and the fellowship of the ring. And all of this is done by just combining commander precons and cards from the main set. Let's begin with the commander of this host, Aragorn the Uniter. Aragorn the Uniter has all the colors we need to build the deck and his many static abilities represents how he unites the many factions of Middle-earth through the colors of magic. Once Aragorn is in play, everything we cast comes with more. Today our goal is to build a deck that equally represents this host of the West, starting all the way from the Shire down to the border fiefdom of Ithilien. Just like our favorite epic, today's story begins in central Eriador with some surprising and amazing creatures known as hobbits. From the Shire, we have four members of the Fellowship, Frodo Baggins, Samwise Gamgee, Meriadoc Brandybuck, and Peregrine Took. I chose Frodo Baggins because he enables the entire tempt mechanic on his own. As this deck will have a lot of legends, the tempting of the ring continues as you place more of his allies onto the battlefield. Accompanying Frodo is his loyal companion Sam. But I can't carry you! I chose Samwise Gamgee because he's a one-man food engine that makes food tokens on each non-token creature entering the battlefield, similar to how Frodo Baggins tempts. I also like the way he can bring back historic cards from the graveyard with food tokens, which allows you to support Frodo in the event Shadow falls upon him. <laughs> with the mention of food comes the arrival of best friends and cousins, Merry and Pippin. But the only food for the brave and true comes from the green dragon. While Merry and Pippin both eventually rise to become great knights of Rohan and Gondor, Food is a core mechanic in the Lord of the Rings magic set. Both Mary, Warden of Isengard, and Peregrine Took fit the deck's mechanics better than their knightly iterations. Whenever you create a token, Pippin creates a food token as well, meaning whenever Aragorn summons a soldier of the West, Pippin makes sure they have enough food for a second breakfast. Don't think he knows about second breakfast, Pip. And every time Pippin or Sam drops a morsel of food onto the table, Mary creates a 1-1 soldier with lifelink. We also have Sam's wife, Rosie Cotton, and their first daughter, Eleanor Gardner. Rosie comes with an incredible triggered ability as she puts a plus one plus one counter on any other creature aside from herself whenever a token is created. Meaning every time Aragorn or Mary makes a human token, you can permanently power up another creature, or whenever Sam and Pippin makes another food token. With this banquet of food, Eleanor Gardner is a nice way to pay off the mechanic. Every time you sacrifice a food token on your turn, at your end step, Eleanor will venture into the deck and find a basic land to put into play tapped. Now we leave the Shire and head towards the Misty Mountains, home to the orcs at the northern peak of Mount Gundabad and formerly dwarves in the mansion of Khazadum, or now known as Moria. We arrive at the elven outpost Imladris, or better known as Rivendell. Here at the home of Elrond, we learn more about the elven forces within the deck. First, we have Elrond, Master of Healing, and his daughter Arwen, Undomiel. Whenever you scry, both Elrond and Arwen can place plus one plus one counters on other creatures. Meaning each time we cast a blue spell with Aragorn in play, the House of Rivendell can provide their aid to the battlefield. In the refuge of Rivendell, we meet an elf friend, Gimli, and his father, Gloin, veteran to the Battle of Five Armies. Both Gimli and Gloin provide this deck a very valuable resource. Mind treasures that help cast our spells of glittering colors. The dwarves in the Third Age were preoccupied with Sauron's forces in the north. And like in the Lord of the Rings, this deck will get limited assistance from Durin's folk. Further east to the Golden Malorn trees, 
is the kingdom of Lothlórien, ruled by Lord Celeborn, and his wife, Lady Galadriel. Celeborn, the wise, is here to provide us a way to scry without casting blue cards, providing the benefits from Elrond and Arwen with an attack that makes the Lord of the Galadrim himself stronger. Celeborn naturally pairs with Galadriel of Lothlórien, who can put lands into play with each scry, or whenever Frodo tempts the ring and you choose a ring bearer that is not Galadriel, you can scry upon the top three cards of your library. The deck also bears gifts from Lady Galadriel, such as the Mithril Coat that can help save a legend on the battlefield at instant speed, or the file of Galadriel that helps give the colors we need. Venturing even further east of the Anduin River is the Forest of Great Fear or Mirkwood, home to the Wood Elves. Here we meet Legolas Greenleaf. There are three versions of the Prince of Mirkwood, and while Legolas Counter of Kills is cooler, Legolas Greenleaf is the preferred choice as this version is easier to synergize with all the other legends in the deck and to give the deck more card draw on combat. Before we meet the Manish Kingdoms, we first enter the Fangorn Forest, named after its oldest denizen, Fangorn, or Treebeard. Treebeard, gracious host, is easy to cast and also plays very well with his hobbit friends, Merry and Pippin, as the life gain from Pippin's food or Merry's tokens fortifies hobbits and tree folk alike. This deck also plays Generous Ent as another way to help fix the lands you have access to with forest cycling. We now ride towards the pastures and lush grasslands of Rohan, home to the Rohirrim, where King Theoden sits in the Golden Hall of Meduseld. Most famously known for their thundering advances, this deck leverages the martial prowess of the Rohirrim to lead our humans to battle. King Theoden and Urkenbrand, Lord of Westfold, turns every human token trigger from Aragorn into a powerful boon that can give a creature double strike or temporarily power up the board. While our attention is focused on the house of Eor, we can't forget about Theoden's niece Eowyn, the Lady of Rohan. For the deck, I chose Eowyn, Shield Maiden, who brings forth two Rohirrim knights on each combat where a human has entered the battlefield, meaning each white spell, while Aragorn and Eowyn are in play, comes with a human and two knights, growing our muster enough so that Eowyn can also help draw cards. Brother to Eowyn is Eomer, chief marshal of the Rittermark and future king of Rohan. While it's a little awkward to have both King Theoden and King Eomer in the same deck, I felt Eomer, King of Rohan, did more than his other variants and brings the fun mechanic of Monarch to the game, which we explore further with the neighboring southern kingdom of Gondor. As the descendants of the ancient kingdom of Númenor, Gondor is home to many fiefs, such as the beautiful Lothlórien, Ithilien, and most famously, Dol Amroth. The capital of Gondor is the White City or Minas Tirith. Behind the white fortress walls sits the white tree, originally planted by King Isildur in honor of his fallen brother Anarion. The tree is replanted by King Tarondor, where it laid standing after its death, awaiting for the return of the true king while Gondor is under the watchful eye of its steward, such as Denethor II and his two sons Boromir, captain of the White Tower, and Faramir, commander of the Rangers of Athelion. For Denethor's favorite son, there are two versions of Boromir. Because this deck has a mix of different creature types, there would not be enough human cards for Boromir, Gondor's hope to easily find. Meanwhile, Boromir, Warden of the Tower, provides Tempt on Sacrifice and allows us to recreate an iconic scene from the Fellowship of the Ring with his noble sacrifice. Faramir also has multiple versions, but the variant I chose is the Steward of Gondor, which can actually crown Aragorn if you played Faramir first by turning you into the Monarch. 
Faramir also helps bring more Gondorians to the battlefield once you wear the crown of Gondor. While we gaze upon the land of shadow from the citadel of Minas Tirith, here we have Beregon, guard of the citadel who like Erkenbron from Rohan, makes our host of humans stronger with each token generated by Aragorn. The last member of the fellowship who can be found in the White City appears when he precisely means to. Gandalf, White Rider, leads Minas Tirith in his defense against the forces of Sauron in the Third Age. While Gandalf takes many forms, I chose the White Rider, as this is one of my favorite moments from Return of the King, and also his ability in making our battlefield stronger with each spell cast along with a scry melds very well with the entire deck. And of course, we cannot forget Shadowfax, Lord of Horses, to show us the meaning of haste. I hope you enjoyed this journey with me in how immersive this Lord of the Rings Commander deck is constructed. It's very easy to put together. All you need is three pre-cons with a few singles and you're good to go. I had a really great time designing this deck and I really appreciate that magic is able to unite my interests together. While our journey is now complete, your part of the story will go on.